Uh, I do want to read this tweet from Scott Wheeler. Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl have a combined 42 points in 11 games this season, and their team is about to improve to a Sterling 5-6 and six record to show for it. And just like that, he follows it up, make it 43 points in 11 games. Now, it is sort of goofy uh, how much those two have played. And I believe Connor McDavid, if I'm not mistaken, he is the leader right now with 22 points in less than 12 games. Um, the... <laughs> This is the wild part. He's on pace for 120 points in 56 games. Stupidity. Like, he could have won. <laughs> somebody tweeted it out, and I forget who it was, and I apologize. On, in Over an 82-game sk- schedule, if he gets that 126 points, he would have won 10 of the last 11 scoring titles. I think it was That's Thomas absurd. Drance. Was it Drance? And, Hell of and a tweet. Dreisaitl, over the last 82 games, has had the best scoring pace. I want to say it was since 1996. That's flipping crazy. It's crazy. By the way, Stupid. just want to throw this at you. Uh, who is number six in NHL scoring right now? No looking. Mitch Marner. No. <sighs> number six? Number uh, six in NHL scoring. This is a very important note. No, Mitch is... He's, he's number three. Tough. Yeah, he's, oh, he's yeah, ahead of Nate McKinnon. Oh. Yeah. Good guess, though. Well, it's uh, f- oh, better than your answer. Jake Vrana. <laughs> no, not even in the top ten. He's not? Uh, no. Uh, not in sport. Funny was. I'm not talking about goals. I'm talking about sport. What conference? No, that's not what it... Oh, what conference? Yeah. Oh, God. The conferences are all new. What... Do, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> so oh, my God. Team or, he's, or what division? What I division are we talking about? Yeah, I guess there are the, conferences this the year. The Mass Mutual East Division. Not, okay, East Division. Cody Cece? No. <laughs> Although we did get a ton of tweets. Apparently he's playing great in Pittsburgh, and, I, and good for him. That's great. I don't know. Pittsburgh listen, fans, I was once like you. Yeah, listen, if he has a couple good games, I'm happy for you. Who is it? Steve is yet to guess. I, no, I said Vrana. Oh, you said Vrana? Oh, okay. James Van Reemsdyke. What? No Playoff healthy scratch, James Van Reemsdyke <laughs> with... 13 points in 10 games. Wow. Cool, right? And the Flyers aren't even that good, right? Well, no, they're second in the division. They're doing okay. Oh, they're second. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, Didn't they're even fine. notice. They're oh, fine. It's been really hard to keep up this year. The furious pace. This is the first multi-day break the Leafs have had all season. By the way, five of those points coming on the power play, which is James Van Reemsdyke's specialty. So, oh, wow. Seven, two, and one, four-game winning streak. Go Flyers. Yeah, no there kidding. They're a good team. They are a very um, good team. So, Connor McDavid, 22 points in 11 games. Leon Dreisaitl, 21 points in 11 games. Oilers, 5 and 6. Guys. Oh, my God. At what point does Edmonton go into an offseason and go, we have a goaltending problem? Uh, well, and Koskinen, I think, has been fine. Like, he, considering he's had to play every game so far, mm-hmm. except for last night. Uh, he's done an okay job, and with the compressed schedule and everything, the Oilers' situation is so trash. They started Stuart Skinner last night, mm-hmm. um, and this Ottawa Senators should have seen his name on the card. Yep, gone. Oh God, we're that bad. And like, I'm I'm not trying to insult Stuart Skinner, but like that dude had a sub 900 save percentage in the AHL. And the Oilers are using him because Troy Grosnick just got there. Um, and they just need to get uh, Koskin in some time. Those guys, those guys lost to a sub 900 AHL goaltender playing for a team on the second half of a back to back. I, you know what? I think the Leafs could lose however many games this season, mm-hmm. a couple dozen at least. And the one I will still die the most mad about <laughs> is the one to the Sens. You can't yeah. drop points to the Sens. Now that they're without Shabbat, now the Sens know what it's like to have a Riley Zaitsev top pair. Unfortunately, it's the wrong M. Riley. It's Mike Riley and Nikita Zaitsev. They, their seventh guy they showed I've never even heard of before. Like Matt Murray, we talked about this. Whoa. We talked about this. Okay, the first goal. The first goal wasn't his fault last night, but second two before he got pulled. Oh, yeah, he's giving them no shot. 
Nothing. No yeah. shot. Matt like, Murray's and this had is... two bad years in a row. If you're, if we're starting, like, hey, this is a bad year for him, and he might not get his game back ever because goalies just fall off, and this might be Matt He's Murray's He's 26. Off. Like, how is this possible? Goalies. 26, are the man. Weirdest. This is why people call them voodoo. Like, that I know is... it's lazy analysis, but like that a player can just. Ooh, I forget. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Like, well, it's my it, coldest take of all time, by the way. I was like, Leafs, you got to go and get Matt Murray. Wrong. <laughs> I forgot. Well, like, things, things coldest can, take I've ever had. It's terrible. Things Don't can happen in your life. You know, uh, there's a huge mental aspect to being a goaltender. Um, you know, little injuries become big ones very fast. Um, and the defense in front of him is atrocious. It's terrible. And he's playing McDavid and Drysaddle. But pff, he's even worse than I think what most bad projections would have been. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's no shot. He was good against the Leafs. Remember that? Yeah. In and those yet, two Matt games? Murray has a higher save percentage than Freddie Anderson. Does he? Yep. 897 <laughs> Freddie Anderson's is 892. Now I do have to say in fairness, I haven't, it's not like I've watched a ton of Ottawa Senators well, hockey outside of the Leafs games. The difference, Steve, is that Freddie Anderson. Oh, sorry. Matt Murray's got an eight four nine. I'm lying to you. Yeah. I was gonna, <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, Thomas Price has got the eight nine seven. But here's the difference, right? So Freddie Anderson's got an eight nine two three zero one goals against average, which isn't great. Matt Murray's no. goals against average over seven games. Can you guess what it is? Uh, I believe it's f- above four. So I I I took a peek at this stat just for last night's game, not on the season, because he got pulled, Jesse. <laughs> His goals against average was 25 okay. last night. <laughs> so, and he's only played, what was it? Seven games? Seven games. Yeah. I got to say it's like, I got to say it's like six. No, Jesse was closer. Four, eight, two. Yeah, I saw it. Oh, you guys, you guys oh are right God. in the middle. So Jesse said something over four and you said it's like, it's not good. It's not good. It's oh. not a great start. There's lots of time, but ooh. Uh, and, you know, the difference is the Leafs can cover up uh, bad defense sometimes with some goal scoring. Uh, Freddie's also been of, winning. Yeah. Like, yeah. Been winning. the Leafs have lost two games and won an OT. Like, they've yeah. been winning. I want to I want, I want to say something, too. So I was, I was texting uh, someone about this today. Uh, I, wish, I wish you could organize it, and I'm sure there's sites that offer this. I wish you could organize it so that three-on-three three save percentage – is removed from your overall save percentage and kept somewhere separately. Because Freddie allowed one goal on one shot in the overtime against the Oilers. It was a two-on-one from Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl yeah. in three-on-three three overtime. It's not the same. There were two shots in that overtime. One was a breakaway that was stopped, and the other was a two-on-one from the last two reigning MVPs, I think. <laughs> that's absurd i actually agree with that i i do think not just because of freddie's case because i could i really don't care about the the, the anybody. percentage of the other yeah i don't think it's the same game <laughs> like it's really it's not it's you not, they have uh you could just look up five on five save percentage right the average fan that's isn't gonna thing. do that there you go right yeah. uh it's, now it's like it's like um it's like a shootout that counts towards your stats yeah. All right. <laughs> now, I, I want to bring up a couple stats that I find kind of interesting going back to the Edmonton situation. Here's the thing. The Edmonton Oilers have talent on defense. We know that, right? But the Edmonton Oilers are not going to play defense. They flat out refuse. So the reason I keep saying Edmonton needs to go and get a great goaltender is because they're not going to play defense. And like you see some of the charts and stuff, and uh, we were make we were, you know, um, poking fun at Dom LeCision earlier, but, um, you know, uh, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl don't rate well on defense. Well, boo fucking who? They score with their $20 million in combined salary, the same as Marner Matthews, Nylander, and uh, uh, Tavares do with their $40 million. They do. They're very efficient with money and scoring. They are – the Leafs' top four are worth 40 points right now, just about. Uh, Edmonton's worth more with the top two. It's pretty amazing. But if you look at the way that they play defense, it's – atrocious it's terrible and they have on paper pretty good team worth of defense and so the reason i say they get, they're going to need to get some other goaltender is because it's it's not because Mikko koskinen's bad he's made the most saves in the nhl this year he's had the most ice time by over 100 minutes by over 120 minutes he needs help he saved 325 shots the next closest 
is John Gibson in Anaheim with 254. How many games has Mikko Koskinen played, guys? How many games has John Gibson played? Koskinen has played 10. Yep. How many games has John Gibson played? Eight. Nine. Damn. He's 70 shots up on John Gibson. One game. That's stupid. That's so. St- and One I know game. Mike Smith got hurt. I know Mike Smith got hurt, but like, oh, but come on, was we Mike were saying Smith heading be- into the season, he's not good. He's not good. Um, yeah, man, that's not good enough. Also, uh, you want to make an Oilers fan big sad. Um, Andreas Athanasiu in seven games with the LA Kings, oh, three boy. goals, two assists, five points on a one point two million dollar contract. Now they were never going to get him at that price. I. I'm going to say regardless of what the cap situation was, they should have found a way to make that work. Well, especially because you gave up two seconds for him. Yes. Right. So this is the thing. I was going to say, well, this summer they should have gone out and they should have tried to get um, Jake Markstrom. They well, did. they tried. Yeah. They tried. Players don't want to sign there. So you got to draft really well and you got to make some really shrewd trades. And with fantasy, you gave up two seconds for a guy you got nine not very good games out of, and you just went, well, you can't whelp. Like, to me, you st- I, I, to walk away from a trade where you gave up two seconds for a guy, no. Mm-hmm. It's not good enough. You can't do it. If you got to re-sign that guy, and you got to salvage it. If, you, what? if they were winning, it would be like, ah, who cares? But they're not. And they should be. It's crazy to me that, like, if they win one play-in round against the Blackhawks, like, they probably re-sign him. Yeah. He gets, like, one goal in game four and they win or something. Like, uh, you cannot – that team cannot afford to give up two assets like that and just drop the guy after less than a dozen games. You can't. You can't. It's not good enough. It's not good enough, man. I, I don't know. I don't know how they surround. Listen, if they ever find a way to surround Dry Sidle and McDavid with like a mediocre uh, offense around them, they're like, who is, you know, remember when Kessel got to completely just take advantage of every team's third pair in the 2016 playoffs? HBK. At the mm-hmm. HBK line, they just got to run amok because they were taking on lower competition than they should be. Like someone on the Oilers one day is going to have this like 30, 40 po- uh, goal uh, season out of nowhere. Uh, just because, I don't know, you have to plan around McDavid. You have to plan around dry sidle. And if the Oilers separate them, it's it has to be. I know the Leafs were like, oh well, you know we can't we can't just the whole game plan can't just be about shutting it down. Uh, a little bit, might be a little bit. What are you supposed to do? Well, you, you do no score, counter though, the attack. Leafs. The Leafs didn't there's, score, right? There's, but there's there's no counter attack for those two. You you put a, just anybody. I think Yamamoto could be that guy one day. I really mm-hmm. like him. Pulley RV is taking too much grief. Um, he's just had. Bad luck. I think the puck is going to go in for him. There's hope there, but at, like as a hockey fan, I'm I'm dying for the Oilers to to break through. To because McDavid, especially this year, like for for a team like the Leafs and for a team like the Oilers, you are you are being gift wrapped a golden opportunity here, and for one of you to not make even the playoffs, you get you got to blow the whole thing up. <laughs> Well, and I, I, I wonder, honestly, and I could regret this, but I'm going to ask the question. Oh, let's go. Don't say it. <laughs> no, the question is, have we seen what the Oilers are? Uh, they've been this for long enough. Yes. Like, have they not? Like, that's, that's my question. It's like, everybody keeps putting the caveat, well, they're bad now, but what if? They're bad now, but what if? They're okay now, but what if? They're in the playoffs, but what, you know, oh, we got them now, and then they're not out. Well, then the play in and no. They lost to the shitty Blackhawks. Like, really, Chicago is not a good team. And they weren't a good team last year. And they got worse. And they got worse. They did get worse. But, re- like, realistically, how much of the Oilers do you need to see? I'm not talking about McDavid. I'm not talking about Dreisaitl. 
How much do you need to see to say, no, don't have it. But it always seems like for the last like three years, they're like two fixes away. Just goaltending and maybe like one other uh, just help on the back end. But they're just so seems- constricted. They can't make that that change. Yeah, but it, it, if they can find a way, if they can get lucky and find a way just to make a couple moves, it always seems like they're that close because they have McDavid and Drysaddle and Nuge and Nurse and Clefbaum. And it seems well, like, hey, you got this core that's like right there and you just need to put in a couple more puzzle pieces and management can't figure out how to make that work. And Clefbaum being out hurts them. It sucks. Yes. Yeah. 